Bavik. Hold on, guys. I think there is some technical issues with collaborating. Uh, we will start off as soon as collaboration collaborating is in. Pavik, can you start off? Okay, so I got an answer from Bavik to start off. So let's start off the class for today. Uh, just before starting the class, I want to answer your questions if you have any from yesterday's class. If, you, if anybody has any, any questions now, they can raise their hand. We'll uh, go through those questions and then come back to the class. All right, all right. So. I, I guess nobody has any questions, so that's fine. So today, what today what we are going to cover is we are going to cover off uh, elastic load balancer and auto scaling, right? So let's see how how that is done, and that will bring us to the end of EC2 completely, right? So let's see how uh, how a load balancer works, right? Uh, yesterday I, I gave you a brief introduction of what load balancer is. Load balancer is basically a networking device. Uh, in, there are physical load balancers and software-based load balancers. Basically, a load balancer is something, uh, a device which uh, divides traffic between multiple servers, right? So if you, I, I always like this diagram. If you guys look at it, I always like to take a reference of this diagram. Diagram has very interesting things in here. If you look at this diagram, right? So this is basic. This is how an AWS architecture diagram will look like, right? Here there are EC2 instances, and here there is a load balancer, right? So for now, ignore these things. Just think that uh, the users are coming into your load balancer, and then the traffic will be divided between the web servers here. And this is how a load balancer works. Traffic will come in from here, hit the load balancer, and then based on the number of servers you have, the traffic will be divided among those servers. Okay, so we are also going to look at this auto scaling today. If you look at it carefully, there is auto scaling also written here. Right, so there is uh, this load balancer here, and then there is auto scaling here. So we are going to today cover off both uh, elastic load balancer and as well as auto scaling. So let's go. So what do we have? We have uh, three instances, right? We have already launched three instances and three different regions. So I, I don't think I know, I, uh, I don't need these instances anymore. So I'm simply going to terminate it. So I'm just doing a bit of cleanup. Okay, so my all of these three instances are gone. So now what I'm going to do is uh, we can start creating the load balancer, right? So we can start creating the load balancer for 
doing that, come into this load balancer sections and click on create load balancer. Right? I can click on create load balancer. Then it will ask you ask you for the name of the load balancer. Right? So what, what is the name of it, load balancer you want to create? Uh, I'm going to create the name as my LB, right? My load balancer. If it, that doesn't make sense, that's fine. So whatever makes sense to you, you can have that name. Right? Then <coughs> you're creating the load balancer under one network, right? You're creating the load balancer in Northern Virginia under your network. So you're going to select the default VPC. As of now, we don't have any other VPCs. So we are going to select the default VPC. The next question is, do you want to create an internal load balancer or an external load balancer? If you look at this diagram, if you look at this diagram carefully, there is a load balancer here and there is a load balancer here. And this load balancer is serving the traffic for these two web servers. And this load balancer is serving the traffic for this application servers. Right? So if you look at carefully, this load balancer is external load balancer. That means it, it, it accepts traffic from internet. And this load balancer is internal load balancer. If you want to have a load balancer like this, you have to check this button. You have to check this, right? You have to check this. If you don't want it, if you want a external load balancer, like what we are going to create now, because we only have the web servers with us. We don't have application servers behind the web servers. So what we are going to do is we are going to create this one. Okay. So for that, you don't have to check it. And just leave uh, advanced VPC configuration. We don't, we no longer need that. Uh, so what we are going to do is, so you are going to create a load balancer, fine. But on which port should it accept the request? And so what it is basically saying is, your faith if internet is here, right, and inter internet is here, and if I'm going to have a load balancer here, something like this, right, if this is my load balancer, on which port, on which port number should it accept the request, okay, and then you'll have your, behind the load balancer, you'll have your EC2 instances, right, then you'll also have to say on which port should this load balancer forward the request to. So that is what, again, this load balancer will send a request from here to here, right? So whenever there is a, say somebody is trying to browse a website, and if that comes to my load balancer, the next thing will be to forward the request to the web server. Because load balancer is just a forwarder. It doesn't do anything. It just clicks the traffic and forwards to the required virtual machines. Oh, sorry, the quite easy to instances for us. So, so on what port should it accept the traffic and on what port should it forward the traffic? Right now what we're going to do is we're going to create a HTTP site. We don't have a SSL certificates or something like that. So we are not worried about HTTPS. So we, we are okay with accepting traffic on port 80 here and also forwarding the traffic on port 80 to my EC2 instances. Okay. So what I'm saying is load balancer protocol is port 80, instance protocol is also port 80. So this is a normal, simple uh, web load balancer, right? So we click next security groups. And for this uh, load balancer, I want both, uh, I want basically SSH traffic. I, I basically want uh, web traffic to be coming in. Traffic to be coming on port number 80. Right, because I'm, we are going to use a web server. So I think, I, if I'm not wrong, I already have a rule for allowing port 80 in this security group. So I'm going to select this. Okay. Then next, configure security settings. These things will be applicable if you are hosting a HTTPS site. But for HTTPS site, you will need SSL certificate, which we don't have it. So we are not going with the HTTPS site. We are, we are going with the HTTP site. Next, configure health check. And this, what you're going to say is, say, say, and this diagram I've just shown you one EC2 instance. But I can have more than one EC2 instance behind the load balancer. Say, for example, if I have three EC2 instances like this, and my load balancer is sending traffic to all of my 
three machines. So the first request coming in goes here, second request goes here, third request goes here. So in this way, it, it keeps forwarding the traffic to all of these instances, right? So that's how it, this load balancer is going to work. Imagine this load balancer is in production and suddenly something wrong happens with this machine. Something, this machine has gone, has gone on for some reason. Say web server crashed or the Linux operating system crashed. Then if my load balancer don't realize that, if my load balancer don't recognize that this machine has gone down and if it keeps sending traffic to one to this, second one to this, third one to this, then what going to happen is every third customer will face an issue. But every third customer who is visiting my website will not be able to see the web pages, right? So to, to avoid this, what my health, uh, what my load balancer is going to do is, it's going to keep checking the health of my EC2 instances based on the configuration that I'm going to do here. So for the load balancer, it is necessary to do a health check. Only then my load balancer will know if, if it should forward the request to the servers or not, okay? So here we are saying on which port to check, right? So my load, I'm saying my load balancer has to do some health checks, right? But it can do a health check on a port. So on which port to check? I'm saying here check HTTP, that is port number 80, and also check if there is an index.html. Only if the port is open, that means the web server is running, and the index.html page is there, only then this load balancer will think that this node is healthy. Only if the no node is healthy, only then this uh, load balancer is going to forward the request to this node or this node or any of the nodes. Only packets will be uh, sent to the nodes only if the nodes are healthy. To determine if, if a node is healthy or not, you have to configure this health check. Okay. Okay. So, the first three are on which port to check and if you want to check for a specific HTML page, it will also do that. And this section is for uh, response timeout. So what does this mean is, this load balancer will send a traffic to this machine, but how long should it wait? How long should it wait? Response timeout. How long should it wait before marking uh, the request as unhealthy? And the next interval is, how often should it check? Should it check every five seconds? Should it check every six seconds? Should it check every 30 seconds? That is up to you, right? For now, I'm going, I'm going to make it as six. So what I want is, I want my load balancer to check my EC2 instances every six seconds to check if the node is healthy or not, okay? And how many times should it check before marking a node as healthy or unhealthy? What I'm saying with this current configuration is check twice, check only two times and mark a node as unhealthy. In the same way, probably I also want to reduce this just for this class because uh, if, I, if I say 10, what's going to happen is this has to do, this has to check, my load balancer has to check my exit instance 10 times. That means 10 into 6, 60 seconds before making a node as healthy. So I don't want to wait, I don't want to wait for that long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply select two. Okay, next. Add EC2 instances. Right now I don't have any instances because all the instances that I had, I had terminated. So right now I don't have any EC2 instances. That's the reason you're not seeing anything here. But if you would have add EC2 instances, those EC2 instances would have come up and we would have added these EC2 instances to load balancer, but not an issue. We can add EC2 instances to load balancer later as well. So that's what you're going to do. And there is another interesting thing here, enable cross zone load balancing, right? So what we are going to do is, as I said, as I said, every region, every region will have at least, every region will have at least two availability zones. Depending on the region, there could be more, but every region will have at least two availability zones. Say for example, my website needs four servers. 
So the best practice says is so the, you should always what should, according to the best practices what should what you should do is should launch two servers here and two servers here. So that if something wrong happens with this availability zone, even then you don't lose you come you don't completely lose your website. So that's a best practice, right? And your load balancer, what this load balancer can do is this load balancer can do cross zone load balancing. So with this, what you can do is these instances can be from different availability zones, which is a very good thing. One load balancer can serve traffic to instances from multiple availability zones right so if you want to enable cross zone load balancing we are going to check that and we want cross zone load balancing then you're going to add tags i don't i don't have any tags to add or i don't have any or else you can have something like say name uh web LB. i'm just giving a name as web load balancer review and create check all of your details are right or wrong if everything if you are satisfied with all of your details just go ahead and click create right so what it says is my load balancer is created my load balancer is created but if you look at the status it says there are no i for now i just have this one i just have this one in place but i don't have any of my ec2 instances so what I will do now is I'll go ahead and <coughs> I'll go ahead and create the EC2 instances. Anybody has any question, they can raise their hand and we'll be able to answer your question. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to create EC2 instances. So I don't have any instance, so I'm going to <coughs> launch an instance, but I'm going to launch the instance using using the Amazon Linux. AMI and somebody has a question. Yeah, Nikhil. Uh, which uh, you told that uh, load balancer work only on 80 port only? Load balancer? Only work over the 80 port, port 80, HTTP. I did not say that. I said what we have selected was 80, but if you want HTTPS, you can select it. And uh, what? Uh, and uh, how many other ports it, it can work? Okay, if you look at this carefully again, it can work on HTTPS, uh, SSL, or any of your port number. Okay, okay, okay. Right? That's what actually I'm looking. For. Okay, it it doesn't it doesn't have to be HTTP only. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> If anybody else has any question, I can answer it. Rupesh has a question. Yeah, Rupesh. Yeah, sir. Actually, we have here an interval of six seconds in health check. Hmm. So, could yeah. it be affected on performance? Because every six, after every six seconds, it will check for health. It is, health check is very small. It doesn't affect any performance. It is very small. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's create. So as I said, we have created this one, and now we are trying to create these EC2 instances. Okay. So let's go ahead and create this EC2 instance. E2.micro. This time, I want to show you cross zone load balancing. So I'm going to specifically choose one subnet or one availability zone so that when I'm launching the next instance I'll choose the next availability zone right so I'm going to do that next add storage ATP is fine and say for our reference for our clarity I'll say it as web server one on to the security group and I wow I am going to select this this doesn't have port 80 open so we might have to open port 80 because right now what it says is it only has ping traffic enabled okay if you look at it, it it only has ping traffic enabled from internet it doesn't have http so we will have to enable that so launch what do you see here fine 
Okay, I want a similar instance like this. So what I'll do, I'll go to actions, I click on launch more like this, right? So that I don't have to make all the settings, right? So, but I want to launch this instance in different availability zone, right? If, I, if, if it would have been the same availability zone, I was all set, but I don't want that. I want to launch this instance in different availability zone so that I can show you cross zone load balancing, right? So I'm, this time I'm launching my instance in US East 1B, US East 1B availability region. So this, this availability load region is different. So we're going to select that and we are going to click on preview and launch. Everything else is fine. Click on launch. Launch. Okay. So now what do we have? Now we have two instances. One instance is already up. I just want to change this so that we'll be able to say web server two. Right. So now we have two instances. One is my web server one and another one is web server two. Right. So let's connect to web server one and make sure that the web server is installed and all the required services are running. If I have to call it as a web server, it has to have some web server software and the web server is running, right? So that's what we are going to do now. So we are going to lock in app. I'll have to specify the key. Okay, so I am able to log into this machine. Right now, I am able to log into this machine. Let's look at the next machine. It should have got a network say, uh, public IP address, but somehow it's not getting it. So let's look at it. We'll not probably should now. We'll send it, uh, we'll see, we'll, we'll create a new instance. It shouldn't take so long, so probably something is wrong. So what I'll do is I'll simply terminate the instance and I'll create a new instance. So that I'm going to select Amazon Linux AMI, simple. Micro. I want it to be in US East 1B because I know that the other machine is in US East 1A and this I'm going to get a public IP. I'm fine with that. Extract storage, tag instance, configure the security group, and we're going to go with SSH security group. Even though name says only SSH, I'm going to modify it to accept traffic from HTTP, right? So click on. My next instance is coming up. So I'll have to. So that instance. So let's connect to the second instance, right? And say, for example, we want to name this as Web Server Two. Right? I have Web Server One and Web Server Two. So let's connect to the second Web Server. I did not specify the key, so let's specify the key properly. Uh, more session. SSH, auth, 
Okay, now I have two web servers here. Right, so two servers here. So I have to make them the web servers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the package. Package is HTTPD. Right, I'm going to install the package in both the machines. Right, I have installed the package in both the machines and I'm going to start the HTTPD service. Service HTTPD start. Service HTTPD start. Right, and I am also going to have a web page. Right, just to browse it from the browser. And my web page has to be my index.html. So it's going to be in slash var www.html. And it's going to be index.html. Right? I'm, I'm going to say in, in this server, this is a web server. I'll probably I'll simply put in a message like this is web server one. Right? And in, and in this one, we slash var slash www html index.html. HTML. So what we're going to say is, this is this is from web server two, right? So we have this. We are going to say this is a web server in web server one, and just to make it different, so we are going to have two different messages here, right? So we are going to save this, and we are going to save this. Now let's go to security group and modify the port group. The port group that we used was only SSH. The name says only SSH but we're, I'm also going to add port 80. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to HTTP and I'm going to accept the traffic from anywhere from internet basically. Now if I do this now if I go back to my EC2 instance, so these are two of my web servers, right? These are two of my web servers. Now if I take this IP address and open this up, right? So this is coming from web server 2 and this one is coming from, this one is coming from both are coming, okay, because I've, I've selected the same IP address, so let's do the correct thing. Let's select the correct IP here. So one is coming from web server one, and another request is coming from web server two. Now, right, now what we have is these two servers, but these two servers are independent. But what we want is, we want to place these two servers behind this load balancer. Right, so that's what we are going to do now. So these two servers are in place. Now let's come back to load balancer. Right. Let's check instances. It says there are no instances right now. And if you remember, we have uh, we have enabled cross zone load balancing. That's the reason it will show you all the availability zones that it can support. Right, it can support instances from any of these availability zones. Okay, I'll say uh, edit instances and I'll add one of the instance to my load balancer. Right, so I have added an instance to load balancer and right now you are seeing out of service. It says instance is in pending state. That means, that means what it, what is happening is my load balancer is checking for the health of the instance. Okay, after it confirms that the health of the instance is fine, then this instance will be added to the load balancer. I think by this time it should be done, let me check that. Right, now it says in service. 
in service means my ec2 instance is healthy and if you look at this chart here it says from this availability zone there is one instance on the load balancer now if i come back to my load balancer description this is the link to access your load balancer right this is the link to no matter how many servers are behind this load balancer it doesn't bother it, it doesn't matter okay there could be 100 servers 200 servers 1000 servers it doesn't matter but if you if you want to access all of those servers the only way you can access those servers is through this link right now if i'm going to put in this you see that request is coming from server one so right now what we did is we have just created this web server and we have attached this server to this load balancer so this server has been attached to the load balancer so now whenever you try to access this load balancer it will always send you to this server because right now it has only one server now what we are going to do is we are going to add the next server okay <coughs> now if I look at my instances I can click on edit instances right I want to select the second server also right I can select my second server click on save now you see the second service second server is out of service but it is coming up right so in couple of minutes even that should be ready right now both now if you look at it, it carefully it says web server 1 is in service web server 2 is in service and one of my server is in us east 1b and another server is in us east 1e so what does that mean is i have enabled cross zone load balancing and i also have servers in two different availability zones now if i come back to same this link and if i press enter right if you if on refreshing this page on the same page you see that the request is coming from two different servers right now both of my machines are working fine behind this load balancer so the request every alternative request is going to one server right guys said you guys are able to notice this i'm not changing the link to access this right and I'm, I'm using the same link but whenever i do a refresh it opens up other server okay so this is how it's going to work all right so let's look at uh, let's uh, what we'll do is let's stop web service in one of the instance so that my load balancer can do a health check and it will fail and then it's it stops sending traffic to that instance okay so let's do this let's stop http service on, the, on this machine okay now i'm stopping https so i have stopped web server now if I go back and look at this, now if I do a refresh here, very shortly, you will see that one of, the one of the servers should be out of service, right? One of my server is out of service because it has failed the health check. And even if you look at health check, and remember, this is what we configured. And if you look at uh, monitoring, we will get later, right? So now one of my instances is out of service. That means one of my instances is not working properly. So now if I look at my load balancer, no matter how many times I do a refresh, no matter how many times I do a refresh, the request always comes from only one server. Right? The request is just coming from one server because my load balancer recognizes that one of my server is down, one of my uh, one of my web server is down, so it is sending traffic only to one server instead of two servers like it was doing earlier. Now it is sending traffic to only one server, right? So that th that pretty much brings us uh, to the end of the load balancers. If you guys have any questions, you can ask me now.
next we are going to look at auto scaling okay somebody has a question let's go take it yeah rupesh yes actually i am asking about the uh, health check hmm. we have given target as index dot scaling right yeah so can we left it as blank it will just look for that file uh, it doesn't look for the contents of the file even if there is a file it is fine if the file is not there then the health check will fail no uh, i want to ask you that suppose that if we left it blank so should it uh, noted as an error or something like that that is what i'm saying what 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 we have said is look for index.html right if the file is there then the health check will pass no matter what are the contents of the file and uh, what about another case because uh, sometimes we have uploaded site and we have given name as home.html default.html because there are three extension for index page no index.html or home no no if i no there are nothing like that means it is only index.html no no we can given name as home.html or default.html also but that you have to configure that in your web server right yeah yeah the default for linux is index.html if you want a okay. different home page you can configure it that okay. you have to do in the operating system and we are not here to learn operating system right so that's a problem oh okay 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 we'll go forward so if you guys have understood load balancers uh this is very interesting load balancer is really interesting right so you can see on on fly how how a, a typical website works right where where there is multiple web servers serving traffic on one uh server this is how the load balancing actually works right so let's go forward now let's look at something called as auto scaling right now let's look at something called as auto scaling auto scaling is even more interesting so let's look at auto scaling right what we have looked now is this one now let's look at this one right so right uh, i think i have explained multiple times about auto scaling but i'm going to explain it again right so once if you configure something called as auto scaling the number of servers that you need will increase and decrease based on the threshold that you configure right say for example for example i have just one server right if this one server can handle the 1000 requests per second my my server is a web server right my web server can handle 1000 requests per second but my traffic is like 800 now it's slowly going up to 900 it, at any moment it will cross 1000 once it crosses 1000 my web server will crash right and my web how auto scaling is going to work and again you have to configure a limit for scaling down right say for example right now as i said there are only 1000 uh, this server can handle only 1000 requests and right now i'm getting 2500 requests so based on that 
based on that my auto scaling group has created two more servers right and place them behind this load balancer so everything is fine but what is happening is slowly the traffic is coming down right now my traffic is coming down say my traffic has gone down to uh, say 500 requests per second now my traffic is only 500 requests per second but if I'm going to still run three servers I'm going to end up paying more money right one server can handle 500 requests so I just need one server I don't need two more servers so if you configure your auto scaling properly what's going to happen is uh, based on the threshold like CPU usage or network ins network outs or whatever it is according to your requirement based on your threshold auto scaling can automatically reduce the number of servers auto scaling is not just about increasing the servers count it is also about reducing the server count it's for both so auto scaling can grow your infrastructure and it can also scale down your infrastructure okay so let's look at that now we are going to have a proper demo on auto scaling right so let's look at that okay <laughs> let's click on auto scaling groups right as soon as i click on create auto scaling group right it says first step is first step is to create launch configuration right and if you look and if you read through this carefully it says first define a template that your auto scaling group will use to launch instance you can change your group's launch configuration at any time okay so what what is this saying is uh, so far i have been saying it will bring up a new instance i have the server right i already have one server and this is my web server okay using auto scaling it is going to create a new server but if to configure my web server i have to change 10, or 10 different parameters only then it will be my web server okay or else let's take this this one server is a t2.micro instance so, uh, so i'm saying to automatically launch a new instance but what should be the instance size how much should be the hard disk size right what should uh, uh, what should be the ami type i'm saying launch an instance but what all configuration should it to should it use to launch the instance that configuration settings you are going to define in something called as launch configuration launch configuration is basically a template that you are going to use to create new instances on demand right so auto scaling is going to use the launch configuration to create new instances on demand okay so first we have to create launch configuration all right so let's go ahead and click on create launch configuration right so this this uh, this wizard is similar to launching a ec2 instance if you if you guys remember this is what the first screen of a launch ec2 instance looks like right this one is completely similar to uh, that wizard but the main difference being here you are you're not going to launch any instance you're only defining what configuration sh should my auto scaling group use to launch a new instance okay so let's go ahead and select amazon linux ami okay, let's use this let's select it then the next screen is what is the instance size what is the instance type so for now we are going to go with the t2.micro instances next configure instance details and <coughs> what should be the name of your launch configuration say i'll say my launch my lc right this is my launch configuration so i'm going to go with my launch configuration if you need uh, spot instances you can check this but i don't need spot instances so i'm not going to do that we are going to talk about iam role later and if you want to have detailed monitoring as i said 
Detailed monitoring happens for every one minute. The normal monitoring happens every five minutes. If you want detailed monitoring, you can go with this, but, uh, but additional charges will apply. For this course, we don't need detailed monitoring, so I'm not going to do that, okay? Then there is something like advanced details, okay? And the advanced details, uh, kernel ID, RAM ID, just leave it as defaults. We don't have to worry about it, right? But <coughs> what I'm saying is automatically create a new instance, right? It's going to automatically create a new instance. But after it creates a new instance, it has to have the web server, right? It has to have the HTTP installed. If you, if you guys have noticed it, when I launched these two instances, when I launched these instances, what did I do first? First I installed HTTP service, then I started it, then I created my index.html. Only then, this server is able to serve web pages. So the same thing should be done whenever my instance is launched as well. Okay, so I should define that. Okay, so I have to write, I have to write a small script, right? As this is a Linux one, I'm, I'm writing a small, the same commands here, but all of them in one file. So this uh, user data section, right? Whenever you look at advanced details and user data section, this section will be used when an instance is launched, right? You can you can specify user data to configure an instance or run a configuration script during the launch, right? So when you're launching an instance, if you want a, a certain thing to be done, some automation to be there, this is where you're going to have it, okay? Okay, so let's, what else we want to have? We want to say yum install minus y httpd. So what is this going to do is it's going to install web service, right? Then we also want to have service httpd start, right? So I'm starting the service. Now, now what do we want? Now we want a web page content. Just having the server, just having the service doesn't give me any message. I want a web server, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a message. I'm going to have a message, something like echo, right? Welcome to Collabra class, right? I'm going to have this message and I'm going to and I'm going to put this message out to my file, right? I'm going to write the message to file. So what I'm going to do is slash var slash www slash html slash index dot html, right? So what this is going to do is it is going to print this message into this file, all right? Uh, so every server that I'm going to launch, before the machine is launched, it's going to execute all of this stuff. It's going to execute, it's going to install HTTPD, it's going to start HTTPD, and it's going to create a web page with this message. But I also want to identify because we are learning, right? Ideally in the load balancer, even if you look at, even if, if you have looked at load balancer, I had two different messages from two different web servers. But ideally in real time scenarios, what do you want is, you want the same web page, right? If I type www.google.com, no matter which web server it hits behind the load balancer, I always want the same google.com web page, right? If, 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 if it has 100 servers, Every time I go to each of the server, I don't want 100 different messages. I want the same message. So ideally, you should have the same web page. But for our identification and learning, we are giving different messages in the file so that we can identify the 
source of the message so that we can differentiate from which server the request is coming from. So I'm also going to have a differentiating message. The host name will host name command will print the machine name in Linux or even in Windows also host name command does the same thing, right? So what we are doing is we are going to give a message. We are going to give a message. Uh, welcome to collab class, and we are also going to print the host name to my index.html. Okay. I also want a public IP address. Okay. Next, add storage. I want a 8 GB storage by default, and under which security group it should be? I'm going to use the security group where I know that port 80 is also open. Review, create launch configuration. And I also want to use the key pair as collateral. Right? Now if you look at it, it, it has automatically changed to create auto scaling group. So now the launch configuration is created. Now what it is doing, it, it is creating the auto scaling group. Okay? Using the launch configuration my lc right so what do you want your auto scaling name name to be any name that you want i'm going to say my alc my auto scaling group okay and what should be the minimum size of this auto scaling group start with one so the minimum size of this auto scaling group is going to be one and which network the default network and you have to select the subnets in which your auto scaling group can launch your instances right if i if you if you uh, as i've been explaining it again and again the ideal case or the best practice will be to launch instances in multiple availability zones so that in the event of a failure in the event of a failure your website will not completely go down okay so with this selection, what it is going to do is with the auto scaling group, right? If, if there is auto scaling group, what it is going to do is the first instance is, is launched in your is to 1A or 1B. The second instance will be launched in your is to 1C or other availability zone, but not in the same availability zone. If if I if I have four availability zones like this. Right, and if I have four availability zones like this, and if my auto scaling group has to launch four instances based on my load, then my auto scaling group will make sure that it always launches the four instances in four different availability zones. Right, so it will follow the best practice. So I've selected all of this. Check the advanced details. Right, so now we are creating the auto scaling group. If you look at this diagram. If you look at this diagram, now we are creating this auto scaling group. But we also want the traffic to come from a load balancer, right? So, in that, we have to go into advanced details and click on receive traffic from elastic load balancer. If I'm going to do this, right? Now, if you click it, click, click on this one, it, it's going to show you a list of load balancers available for you, right? So, my load balancer is available here. So, it's going to select that. And what is the health check type? If you remember, we have configured elastic load balance health check, right? So I'm going to select that. Health check grace period is as soon as, uh, uh, if you look at this, this explanation is very clear. The length of the time that auto scaling waits before checking an instance health status. After an instance is launched, how soon, how soon should the health check happen, right? We are right now what we are doing is we are doing very small configuration like installing only web server, creating only uh, a small web page, just starting a, a, a web service. But if we have some complex configuration to be done, then probably it might take more time to do all of this configuration. In that case, probably you're going to have more time. But for now, I'm just going to say 30 seconds. I'll check the period is 30 seconds. Right? And if you want some detailed monitoring, you can go 
go with this, but it is not available here. So we simply go for configure scaling policies. Okay. Right. So now we, are, we want to create an auto scaling group. So if you we want to create this, right? So initially, what we said, the initial group size should be one. That's what we said. You remember, we said the initial group size should be one GB. Should it scale up or down? Yes or no is up to you. Uh, if if you're not scaling up or down, yes, the initial group or uh, uh, just one server is, is is of no use of creating auto scaling group, right? So we want to scale up and scale down. For that, you are going to store this. Use scaling policies to adjust capacity of this group. Okay, I'm going to save this. I'm saying use scaling policies to adjust the capacity of this group. And you have to say how many minimum servers should be there and how many maximum servers, right? You have to choose. You should know, right? You should know how many minimum servers and how many maximum servers. For our class, I'm going to say four. What I'm saying is a minimum of one instance and a maximum of four instances. I, I'm not expecting my load to go above my a maximum. That is, I'm expecting is only four instances. Okay. <coughs> and now, says increase group size. This is just a configuration. It says increase group size. Execute policy when. So when should it increase the group size? When should it increase the group size? So for that, you have to create something called as a alarm. Right? You have to create a new alarm. Okay. So basically, we will have to talk about CloudWatch for you for you people to understand alarms properly. Right. So what we are going to do is we are going to simply click on add a new alarm. Right now, uh, for now, ignore this. For now, just ignore this SNS topic. We'll talk about it later. So now we are creating an alarm, right? So what it, what this alarm is going to do is it's going to monitor your. So based on whatever you select here, so I'll say whenever my average CPU utilization average of CPU utilization. You can select any one of this. For auto scaling, you can select any one of this. So now I'm going with CPU utilization. I'm saying whenever my average of CPU utilization is greater than or equals to say 60%. So what I'm saying is whenever the average of CPU utilization is greater than or equals to 60%, right, for at least one consecutive period of five minutes. So whenever the average CPU utilization of above 60 percent for a for for a period of five minutes, right? It's going to create this alarm. And say, I'll also say say a uh, high CPU utilization. Right? This is the name of the alarm. We'll talk about very shortly. Right? So what I'm doing is I'm I'm creating an alarm. Right? I said. Whenever the average of CPU utilization is about 60 percent, so what do you want to do? You want to add one instance, right? Add one instance when 60 when CPU utilization is uh, CPU utilization is greater than 60, right? When the CPU utilization is greater than 60, add one instance. Okay, then how long do you want to wait before? How long you want to wait before the next scaling action, or how long do you want to wait before launching a new instance? Uh, we'll say we'll simply say 30 here. Okay, so let's go. Or we'll just. 
we'll just leave it right we'll just leave it then what we have configured is for increasing the what we have now configured is for increasing the number of EC2 instances but we, are, we should also say when it should decrease the EC2 instances also right we also want to have a policy for scaling down so decrease group size so we should also say when it should when it should decrease the CPU usage sorry when it should decrease the number of EC2 instances so for that I'm going to add a new alarm and I'm going to uncheck this and I'm saying average of CPU utilization is less than or equals to say 40 percent I'm saying that the average of CPU utilization is less than or equals to 40 percent for a period of five minutes for a period of five minutes create alarm and whenever this condition happens do what remove one instance whenever this condition happens remove one instance next I hope you guys got this and right, we are going to see this working so let's go forward click on uh, click on next configure notifications we will ignore this for now tax if you want to have any tax click on review right and if you guys remember we already have a load balance right and we also have this EC2 instances here if I'm going to have these EC2 instances and my auto scaling instances also in this load balance it's going to create confusion so I don't want to have that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these existing instances from my load balancer so, so that my load balancer is exclusively used for my auto scaling group so that we can understand it better okay so I'm going to click on create auto scaling group right now now it has now it has created an auto scaling group and now if you go back to your EC2 console and if you click on instances you see that a new instance is automatically coming up right this new instance is automatically coming up I haven't created this instance right you guys have noticed that I just created an auto scaling group if you look at my uh, EC2 console again and if you look at your auto scaling groups and if you look at this uh, I have selected this and if I click on activity history right it says it, it, is, it is launching a new instance F0F right F0F this instance has been created by my auto scaling group because I said the minimum should be one instance that's the reason it is, it is launching one instance Okay, now let's look at this load balancer also. What we also said was create an instance and add the instance behind a load balancer. We also did that. So let's look at that. This is still out of service. then I think I made I, I think I made some mistake it says instance has failed at least it has launched an instance but it has failed to attach the instance behind a load balancer so let's see what's what 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 the mistake that I made so let's connect to the instance and see I think I made some mistake so let's see what it is so let me connect to this instance Let me see if my web server is started. My web server is started. 
and let me see what's running. Even my index.html page is there. So why did it fail? Uh, probably it was taking some time to come up, right? I did not make any changes. Now it says in service, right? So what it has done is it has created a EC2 instance and added that EC2 instance to my load balancer. All of these things, it has done it. My auto scaling group has done it. I haven't done anything as such. I've just created a launch configuration and created the auto scaling group. Now if I now if I look at this, now if I try to browse my website using this load balancer. Right, it says welcome to Collabda class and the IP address and the, this is the host name of this machine basically. If you log in, you see this is this to be your host name, right? So this is my host name. So it is working fine as expected. But we want to see auto scaling in action, don't we? We want to see auto scaling in action. We want to see how the service will increase. Right? So for that we will run a command in this operating system so that the CPU load will go high. Because if you guys remember, we have said that whenever the CPU utilization is above 60%, auto scaling will work and it will create a new EC2 instance. So for that to happen, I have to increase, I have to put some load on this EC2 instance. So for that, I'm going I'm, I'm taking another session from for the same uh, machine and I'm doing this sudo su minus right so if I'm looking at top top command top command is like your uh, windows task manager where you look at CPU utilization and all of that stuff right top command is like your windows task manager and if you look at currently the CPU usage this is the part which we are interested Right now, the CPU usage is 100% idle. So nothing is being used. My CPU is not at all being used. But according to my configuration, it will increase the instance whenever the CPU utilization crosses above 60% for the auto scaling group. Right? So what do we have to do to increase the CPU usage? So let's run a command. The command, don't ask me what this command does. Right, but just execute this command. This will put the load on CPU. If you want to take it down, you can take it down. Right. As soon as as soon as I run this command, if you look at it, if you look at this carefully, my CPU utilization has gone above hundred percent. Right? Now my there is no zero percent CPU usage. Right? So my CPU is usage is completely used. So it is hundred percent used. So very shortly, what should what we should say is right probably we'll have to wait for some five minutes or so then because it checks every five minutes if you remember if you remember uh, if you remember this one if you remember scaling policies right what we said was whenever uh, wait for CPU utilization uh, increase CPU size right so increase group size it has to wait for 300 seconds right so it will wait for 300 seconds before launching a new instance. And if you look at your auto scaling now, right, it has some details like uh, when it was created, what is the initial placement size and all of this size, all of these details. And if it launches a new instance, it will show up here. What all it is doing, if it is increasing the instances or if it is decreasing the instances, it will show up here. Scaling policies are here, instances are here. It will basically show you all the instances that it has created. So, 
So all we have to do is wait. Anybody has any question? I can take the questions. Okay, instead of waiting, what we'll do is just have to wait. Instead of waiting, what we'll do is we'll have a uh, we'll have a look at CloudWatch, right? We'll have a look at CloudWatch because there is nothing much to do now. Until it comes up, we don't have anything to do. So what we'll do is we'll open a new tab. We'll open a new tab, and there is something called as CloudWatch here. As I said, whenever you launch a new instance or whenever you create any of the AWS resource, that will be monitored by something called as CloudWatch. CloudWatch is the default monitoring solution for all of your AWS resources, right? So if you click on CloudWatch, now, right? Now if you click on CloudWatch, you already see two alarms here, right? You already see two alarms here. If you click on alarms, you already see two alarms. If you remember, these two alarms we created when we were creating the auto scaling group. During the auto scale group creation, we created two alarms and these are those two alarms here. Okay, so right now what it is saying is, my low CPU utilization alarm is going high. Because we said to alarm whenever the CPU utilization is less than 40%. So the last time it checked, if you look at history, the last time it checked, CPU utilization was lesser than that. If you expand this, it will show how much was it. It was less than 40%. So this alarm is going up. Right? Whenever this alarm, if I look at my both the alarms, if I look at my both the alarms, whenever this alarm will go go high or whenever this this monitor or this alarm is in alarm state, your auto scaling group will work and it will add another CPU, right? So <coughs> with uh, CloudWatch, you can create alarms. Right, so basically, uh, you guys, I hope you guys understand what alarms is. Say, for example, you are watching your body temperature. Okay, so what is considered to be normal? Normally, 98 is considered to be normal, right? Whenever your temperature goes above 100, you are worried. You, there is an alarm because you think that you will have fever. Right, so that is an alarm condition. Whenever, whenever you see something unusual happening, then you will raise an alarm, right? In a similar way, you can configure alarms for your EC2 instances or any of the AWS resources that you're going to use, right? So depending, you have to define what is the normal condition and then you also have to define what is your abnormal condition. Like CPU says going above 80% is abnormal for me. Then what you'll have to do is I'll have to create alarm saying that whenever CPU utilization is above 80%, do something. What that something is, I can configure it. I can decide, right? So what we are going to do now is, I'm going to configure different alarms. I have different alarms here, right? So another interesting thing with alarms is, your billing alarms, right? Say, <coughs> say uh, you're using your AWS free account, right? AWS account. Now you can also configure alarms for AWS usage, saying that say whenever my AWS usage goes above one dollar, two dollar, three dollars, whatever your amount is. Say if my company's budget is to spend only hundred dollars per month on AWS, so uh, whenever this hundred dollars crosses, I have to inform my management saying that the AWS usage is crossing hundred percent. So for, if I have to know whenever my AWS usage crosses hundred percent. I have to create an alarm, right? So I have to create an alarm for that. So for that, what you have to do is, okay, 
and with this alarms there is also uh, something called as SNS. So I'll use the small space here. I'll use the small space here. I'll use the small space here. So uh, say for example, you know that your body temperature is, your thermometer is, say for example, you're looking at your thermometer. Your, your thermometer is saying your temperature is at 1 at 1. That is a worry, right? You have noticed it. But after you see that, you will do something, right? You will do something. That is your action. Whenever there is an alarm state, you do something. That is your action, right? So with the alarms, what we can do is, we can also configure actions to alarms. What should it do? The CPU utilization is more than 80%. But my CloudWatch, what it does is, simply looks at the CPU usage and it says that CPU usage is more than 80%. But what I want is, whenever the CPU utilization is above 80%, it should mail to the system admin, right? It should mail to the system admin. So this sending mail to the system admin is taken care by a different AWS component called as SNS, right? Sending mail to, sending notifications is controlled by a different component called as SNS, system notification service, okay? So this CloudWatch and SNS are very, very closely integrated, right? CloudWatch is going to monitor, SNS is going to notify. Just monitoring will not help. If, if there is a fire at, at some place, if you just keep watching it, it's of no use. You are worried, but if you just keep watching it, it is of no use. You have to you have to call the uh, fire office, right? To get a, a fire, uh, whatever you call it, fire machine in place to uh, to set off the blaze, right? So you want you want to call up. So that is nothing but notification. You want to notify someone. Right, so let's look at uh, SNS also. SNS is a very small thing. So let's go and look at SNS and then we'll come back to uh, this alarms or CloudWatch. Let's look at this. Let's open up SNS here. Push notification service. So let's get started. Click on this, get started. In SNS, what's going to happen is, in SNS, what's going to happen is, you're going to create a topic, okay? Say for example, AWS uh, billing alarms, okay? Say I have different, different people in my organization. I want to send all my billing alarms to my upper management, right? Whenever the billing usage, whenever the CPU, sorry, whenever the billing, billing alarm, say whenever the AWS usage crosses above hundred dollars, I want the upper management to be notified about it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create something called as a topic and add subscriptions to the topic, right? And add subscriptions to the topic. Subscriptions are nothing but mail IDs, right? I'm going to create a topic where you are, say for example, for example, if this is my, say for example, if this is my CloudWatch, if this is my CloudWatch, my CloudWatch is going to monitor. As I said, my CloudWatch is going to monitor and then it is going to write something to this topic. This is my topic. My CloudWatch is going to monitor and whenever it, it, it notices something unusual, according to our definitions. We define what is unusual or what is an alarm condition. So as soon as it notices something unusual or uh, or something in an alarm state, it's going to send, it's going to write a message to this topic. And all the subscribers, say if I have 10 users subscribe to this topic, all those 10 users are going to get an email notification, right? So let's look at that. First, what you want to do is you want to create a topic. You want to create a topic. So I'm going to create a topic as AWS alarms. This is my topic name. Okay. 
create topic. I have created a topic. Now this topic is in place. Now what we want is we want to add subscribers to the topic so that they get the email. So what you do is click on subscribe to top subscribe to topic or you can also do it from subscriptions, create subscriptions and all of that, or else you can do it from there. Right? So we'll go to topics, we'll select this topic and we'll go in here and we'll say subscribe to topic. Okay. So how do you want? How do you want? So we, we are saying notify, but notify using what? Notify using a SMS or notify using an email or notify send, notify using a HTTP request is up to you. So you have these different options that you can choose. We are going to choose say email, right? But which email IP address, which email address? I'm going to say my email address, Vishnu AWS at uh, gmail.com. This is my email address. I'm going to say create subscription. What, I'm, what is going to happen is I'm going to get a email saying that you have subscribed to this. Are you sure you want to go for that? So let's let me sign into my AWS account. Right now I got a subscription confirmation. Now if you go back to your SNS, if you look at your topic or if you look at your subscriptions, so there is a pending confirmation. So I haven't yet confirmed. So for doing that, what I have to do is I have to click on confirm subscription. Right? Now it says subscription confirmed. Okay. Let's continue with that. Now it says my subscription is confirmed. So with SNS, that is what you're going to do. You're going to create topics and then you're going to add subscribers, which we have done. Okay. Now let's come back to CloudWatch. Now let's come back to CloudWatch. <coughs> right. Then let's come back to CloudWatch. Okay. Now, if you look at the alarms, right, my high CPU utilization alarm has gone up. So, ideally, what should happen is now we are looking at my auto scaling again. Now, ideally, what, what should have happened is now if you look at my uh, EC2 instances, if you look at it, it is creating machines, right? It is creating multiple machines. If I look at my auto scaling group, because my CPU utilization is going up, it has created, if you look at uh, activity history, the next instance is still coming up, right? But it is creating the next instance. Now I have two instances. Now I have two instances behind my load balancer. If I look at my load balancer, it has automatically created two machines. It is in the process of creating third machine, but it has automatically added these machines also to the load balancer. Now if I take this same link or this link is open here. Now if I do a refresh, right? It is automatically adding machines, adding machines to my auto scaling group, right? It is automatically adding machines to my auto scaling group. Now, okay, and even if you look at the instances, right? If you look at if you look at instances, all these instances are in different availability zones. This is the best practice, right? So these instances, even if it's going to launch the next instance, it's going to launch the instance in US East 1C, because that is where the uh, that is the only availability zone where there there is a no instance. Right, so the next logical thing for it to launch a new instance is US is 1C. Okay, but what we are going to do now is we are going to we are going to reduce CPU usage. We don't want we don't want more more and more machines to come up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the CPU usage. 
right? Or everything will be here. If you look, okay, if you refresh this, it is it is create it is still creating the instance. But I'm going to stop this CPU usage. So very shortly, what's going to happen is it's going to delete the instances that it has created, and it's going to be with only one instance, the minimum size, because there is no CPU usage, there is no load on my website. So it's going to reduce the number of EC2 instances. We can see that in some time. Let's continue with CloudWatch. We'll come back and have a look at this. Anybody has any questions? Okay, let's go forward. Now look. Now let's look at billing. We want to create billing alarms, right? So whenever so whenever my AWS bill is going above a certain limit, I want to be notified about it, right? <coughs> to create billing alarms, it says no billing metric forms. To get started, visit the web page, click preferences, and check, right? So we have to do this. So we'll have to go here. Click on what did it say? Click on preferences, isn't it? Or click preferences in the left navigation pane. So it should be somewhere preferences here. Preferences. And you can receive billing alerts, right? You save preferences. Preferences saved. Okay, so uh, billing. Right, Amazon CloudWatch can help monitor your AWS bills by sending you email alerts whenever, when charger, when charges exceed the threshold that you define. Right, so we want, we want, if you want emails to be sent based on your AWS usage, you can do that. For that, you have to click on here. Okay. Can click on create al create alarm, right? So you want to create alarm. Good. You want to create alarm. Exceeds. So what is your limit? So whenever my AWS usage crosses one dollar, do what? Send an email to this notification group. If you look at it. We have created this SNS notification group. So SNS topic, right? So based on this topic, it is showing, it is saying whenever my AWS usage crosses this USD, US dollars, send notification to this email, this SNS topic, okay? Even if you look at advanced also, it's same, right? So if you, if you want to have a different name for your billing alarm, you can have it, and you can also define how much is the threshold, and whenever is in the alarm state, whenever this crosses $1, State is alarm, send a notification to AWS alarm, which is nothing but this email ID. Right? If you want, if you have more than one notification group, if you if you have more than one notification group, you can add it here. If you have more than one topic, you can add you can add next next notification here. Right? But I just have one, so I'm I'm fine with it. Right? I am going to create an alarm. Currently, whenever you create an alarm, the first state will be in insufficient data because it will be trying to gather data. As soon as you create an alarm, you will not have enough data to judge whether the data has crossed the threshold or it is within the threshold. So as soon as you create it, it will be in insufficient data. Okay. So these are for the billing. Right. Now if you look at metrics. Right. Now, if you look at metrics, if you look at your billing metrics, right? So the billing can, can be on metrics is measures. If you guys understand, metrics is measures. The CPU usage is a metric. Memory usage is a metric. Hard disk usage is a metric. These are all metrics, right? In the same way, my total usage, my total AWS usage is a metric. So whenever my total AWS usage crosses something, I want to be alarmed. So I can also create an alarm. For that, I'll have to 
to which metric your total estimated charges metric or by service metric with aws what you can do is you can also uh, configure billing alarms for each specific service right say for example i want to be notified whenever my aws usage crosses 100 dollars that is fine but i also want to be notified when I, whenever my aws ec2 usage specific ec2 usage only crosses 50 dollars my total budget for my aws account is 100 dollars in specific my ec2 budget is only 50 dollars and another 50 dollars i have i have put aside for other aws resources right i don't want my total budget to be eaten up by my ec2 instances alone so I want to configure a specific alarm only for my EC2 instances, only my EC2 usage. And if you look at your AWS bills, once you get the bill, if you look at your AWS bills, your bill is itemized, saying that uh, this much amount is for EC2 instance, this much in, this much amount is for S3 bucket, like this, you'll have different classifications, right? So. For example, I want to configure a billing metric specific for EC2, right? So I want to create an alarm. I want to, this will basically if you select this, in here you will see gra graph for last six hours. If you want to see graph for more time, you can click here. This is just for the graphical display, right? If you want a different time range, you can select, right? This is just for the graphical display here. But I want to create an alarm. Right? I want to create an alarm. Saying that AWS uh, high EC2 spending. Right? I'm saying my alarm name is AWS EC2 high spending. Right? So I'll say this alarm is for high EC2 spending, right? And I'm saying whenever, whenever charges, the estimated charges, right, for EC2, right, crosses above one dollar, okay, or whatever it is, say my ten dollars per one period, what you want to do? Change the state to alarm, right? And what do you want to do? You want to notify this email group. The same thing is being displayed here. <coughs> right? Click on create alarm. Now it's going to create another alarm. And if you look at my OK alarms right now, my billing alarm is my billing alarm is in OK state because I haven't used more than one dollar. My total AWS usage has then crossed one dollar, so this is also in OK state. Even this will come in OK state, right? But whenever you configure, whenever you use more of your AWS usage, because you some of you guys might have used your friends' cards or something like that, and you don't want to spend money on their cards, right? So better you create an alarm, which will notify you whenever the usage process say one dollar. You don't want to spend more money of other people, right? So probably you can do that. Now if I look at my OK alarms, so what it says is my high CPU utilization is also OK. So the CPU utilization also has come down, right? The CPU utilization has also come down. Now if I look at my, now if I look at my auto scaling group, right? Now currently how many instances I have? I just have this one instance. It has also terminated two instances. It has created two, it has one instance it has created at the start, right? Then it has created two more instances because my load was high. Then it realized that the load was low and then it no longer needed two more instances. So it, it has terminated the EC2 instances also. So this is how your auto scaling is working. Did you guys get auto scaling? It has automatically launched instance. It has automatically deleted instances, right? 
So auto scaling can do all of this stuff for you. You don't have to do anything else. You have to just configure it, configure it properly. Then auto scaling will do all the job for you. And uh, and let's uh, uh, if you look at your auto scaling, you have details, activity, history, scaling policies, and all of this be configured. You can you also have the current number of instances just one. And if you want to be notified about say whenever it launches a new instance or anything like that, as we have covered SNS, so I'm, I'm I'm trying to explain this to you guys. So whenever uh, I'm saying whenever it is launching a new instance or whenever it is terminating an instance, send a mail to this topic. If I say this, so the next time it launches a instance, it, it's going to send a mail to this email ID. Okay. Did you guys get auto scaling? I hope you guys got your got auto scaling. If you guys have any questions, you can ask me even now. Okay, so let's continue with CloudWatch. All right, so we have metrics, right? Right now, what we looked at was billing metrics, and we have created a metric for EC2 usage, right? Currently, if you look at metrics, there are metrics for billing, there are metrics for EDS, EC2, ELB, SNS, but AWS has, if I look at my AWS console, AWS has many other resources, right? But there are no metrics for them. But there are no metrics for them. These metrics will appear as soon as you start using the resource, right? If I look at my AWS console again, there is something called as RDS, right? There is something called as RDS. There are some metrics for RDS also. But those metrics will not be visible unless and until you use the RDS resource. Once you start using the RDS resource, those metrics will come here. RDS metrics will come here. And even in billing also, you will see a separate section for Amazon RDS. Okay, each service you use, if it is being built separately, that will be shown here. Okay, so in this way, you have different alarms, different metrics, right? So you can you can explore all the metrics that are there. For example, let's look at EC2 metrics, right? For example, let's look at EC2 metrics. Uh, what is my current active machine? Let me pick up a machine name. My current active instance is this one, right? So one of my instances is that one. So there are met many metrics. I'll, I'll get confused for which one I'm looking for. So I'll put in this number, right? So for this machine, I have these metrics, right? I have these all metrics that are there. There are three interesting metrics here, like status check, failed, status check, failed instance, status check, failed system, right? So if you come back to your AWS console, or sorry, EC2 console, you look at here, for this EC2 instance, do you see this? It says status checks two by two, and it, it puts a green symbol here. So every instance that you launch, right, if you look at status checks, there are two types of status checks, or your CloudWatch keeps monitoring these instances, right? So if something happens wrong inside the operating system, right? If my server crashes or if my server is hung, right? If server crashes or server is hung, if my file system is corrupted due to which my operating system has crashed, right? Then your instance status check alarm will, will be in alarm state. This check will fail. Your instance status check will fail. But say for example, uh, you guys know, right? These all EC2 instances are virtual machines. Obviously, these virtual machines will be running on a physical machine. So, if something wrong has happened with that physical machine, right? If something wrong has happened with that physical machine, then the system status check is going to go into fail, right? This system status check will fail. But whenever the system status check failure or instance status check failure, 
I want to be notified about it. Right? I want to be notified about it. Without this, I'll not even know. Say I'm sleeping at my home. On a, on, a, on a Monday night, I'm sleeping at my home. Suddenly, my instance goes down. And if, if I don't know about it, then the Tuesday morning that I walk into my office, I'll be in a problem. I don't want, I want to avoid that. For that, what I can do is I can create something like alarms. Right? So for every instance, you can create alarm. Okay? So what we're going to do is you can create alarm either from here, create a status check alarm, or you can create alarms for here. Right? If you look at it, there are three alarms. Status check failed. This is for both. Right? If you click on this, create status check alarms. <coughs> right? So if you look at this drop down, there are three. These three are nothing but they are coming from here. Right? These three are coming from here. So whenever there is a status check, whenever there is a failure, right? Either it, it could be one of these, right? Any of this. So what do you want to do? You want to send an email. And what else you can do? You can also try to recover the instance or stop the instance or terminate the instance or reboot the instance. Right? So what could happen with uh, uh, what's going to happen is if you say recover the instance, AWS will automatically try to repair the or recover the instance. Or if you say stop the instance, so whenever there is a status check failure, uh, AWS will automatically try to shut down the instance. When you say terminate the instance, whenever there is status check failure, the instance will be deleted. If you select this, the instance will be rebooted. You can select any one of this based on your requirement. For now, I'm going to say, say for example, stop the instance. Okay. Just click this box for now. Don't worry about it. We'll talk about it later. Just click on stop the instance and click this box. So when should it kick in? When should it start? Either when status check, instance status check fails, or even system status check fails. If I want that sort of scenario, I'm going to select any. Right? Is failing or failed for how many times? For two consecutive period of say one minute. Whenever this condition happens, stop the instance and email. Right? Create other. I created alarm and now if I look at it, I should have that alarm here, right? AWS, status check field, any. And currently it is green. But if, I, if something happens to my instance, this alarm will go up and I'll get an email. Okay? <coughs> Let's go forward with EC2 alarms. There are other alarms also, right? Depending on your requirement, you can choose the alarm that you're looking for. But there are alarms like uh, network in, network out, disk, uh, disk alarms based on disk, alarms based on CPU. What we have looked at is CPU, right? So these are all alarms for EC2 instances. There are also alarms for EBS. If you remember, EBS is nothing but your elastic block storage. Yesterday we have created volumes attach volumes to the system and all of that, right? So even your volumes can be monitored. Even your hard disk can be monitored, right? There are more number of read, read and write operations. Read operations, I want to be monitored. If there are more number of read writes, right? If my volume is completely ideal for very long, I want to be notified. So based on your requirement, you can choose the metric. All you have to do is you have to choose the metric and you have to click on create alarm. Then it will ask you what to do, right? Whenever the state is alarm, you have to define a value, do what, okay? Identify what you want to monitor, then the next step is do what? Do you want to send an email or do you want to stop an instance? So there are some easy, to, there are only few of the actions that you can do, right? So there are other metrics like ELB metrics, load balancer metrics. There are other metrics like SNS metrics. So in this way, you get more and more metrics added 
as and when you use the resources. All right. So, any questions, guys? I think I'm almost done for the day. If you, if you don't have any questions. If anybody has any questions, they can raise their hand because we have we have covered all of EC2 today, and we have also covered CloudWatch and SNS. Pavik, any questions there? Okay, Babik also doesn't have any questions. So if, if nobody has any questions, I think I'm, I'm, I'm done for the day and uh, we will meet uh, during the next weekend. All right, so we are done. Bye guys.